You probably clicked this video because you want to learn how to evangelize. Well, do you want to evangelize like this? I pray in the Holy Spirit, you touch. In Jesus' name, whoa. Wow. He's all over you. He's delivering you right now. I'm a pastor of an outreach ministry in Central Florida, and we have seen many souls come to Christ. Almost every service we have, people are getting baptized, delivered, healed. We're seeing so much fruit, and it's all through evangelism. We're an outreach center full of evangelists. So I'm going to give you five easy steps on how to evangelize so you can be a soul winner. The Bible says a wise man wins souls. So if you want to win souls to Christ, that's probably why you click this video and I'm going to teach you. So step one, the gospel. You have to know the gospel in order to evangelize. If you don't know the good news, you can't win them to Christ. If you can't explain the good news, they'll never be able to be brought to Christ. You have to be able to do it under five minutes. You can't preach a long gospel with wise and contentious words. Like Paul said, he said, I didn't come to preach the gospel with wise and contentious words. I came with the spirit and power. You have to be able to preach the gospel in a way that they will have understanding. Maybe some of the people watching this video right now don't even understand the fullness of the gospel. You might not even be saved. You have to understand what Jesus did for you in order to believe. How can you believe in something you don't know? So you got to be able to explain what the blood of Jesus does for you, how it washes away sins, why it washes away sins, because blood equals life and sin equals death. And you need blood to atone for sin. And they did it in the Old Testament with animals and goats. And they did it to atone for the sins of Israel. And they would constantly do it. And it was a work and a work and a work. And they were waiting on the Messiah to come. And then he finally came and they didn't recognize him. And he fulfilled all the Old Testament prophecies because you were born into a sinful nature because of Adam and Eve, your body is an earth body suit and it's made of flesh you see where I'm going and you can you continue say you know and he's your Lord meaning when you give him when you give him your soul to keep you say Lord God Lord over my life Jesus you're surrendering to him you can't just believe and not believe that he's your Lord believing in Jesus many people do Muslims do Buddhists do but be it saying Jesus you're my Lord I'm giving you my soul to Lord over my life that's different and my Savior because you died on the cross and shed your blood now you wipe away all my sins and you reconcile me back to the Father you got to explain to people what reconciliation means you got to explain that it means you once knew the Father in heaven and you're being reconciled back to him right you're not meeting him for the first time you're being reconciled back so you got to explain that and then when you break that down they got they start having understanding and then you tell them you can't change in your own strength you need the power of the holy spirit so he could turn your heart from stone to flesh and give you new desires and that comes through repentance from by, by grace through faith you're saved so you need to have faith you need to put your trust in god you need to turn your heart and surrender to god and say god i'm done with everything and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth flows, speaks, right? So you say the Romans 10, 9, you say the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and you confess from your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he rose from the dead, you'll be saved. Now that I've explained it to you and you understand, do you believe? Now they're like, man, you just broke it down under five minutes. Because a lot of these people, they're at gas stations and malls and, 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 and marketplaces. They don't have time. They got a wife, a husband, kids waiting for them, friends. And the enemy always sends people to take them away. So you got five minutes to preach the gospel so they would have understanding to know why they want to repent of their sins, why they want to, why they should repent of their sins. Because the wages of one sin is death, right? And that God gives us a free gift of eternal life through faith in him. So explaining to them that, you know, you've, have you lied before? Have you stolen? Well, guess what? what? That one sin literally gives you a ticket to hell. But Jesus came so that we would have forgiveness of sins. He came to save us. And now they understand, right? So the gospel is key. Second is prayer. You're going to have to be able to pray. When I go out to the field, I'm not just going out without praying first. I pray. I pray throughout the day and I ask the Lord, send people for me to preach to so that I can save souls. You see, when I first came to Christ and I was evangelizing like a, like a chicken with my head cut off, I was telling everybody about Jesus, which isn't wrong, but I didn't see too much fruit. And it's because I didn't know where the harvest was ripe, where it was ready. But as I started praying and the Lord started downloading and speaking to me, he said, son, go here, go to this parking garage, go to this mall, go to this coffee shop. And I would listen and I would 
yield to the voice of the Holy Spirit, that's when I would see miraculous encounters because I was being obedient. The Lord knows who's ready. The Bible says no one comes to the Father unless the Son, I mean, no one comes to the Son unless the Father draws him in. So we have to be able to listen and be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit in prayer in order to go out there and preach the gospel. So some of you be, might be like, I don't hear the voice of God. And you need to get in your word. You need to get in prayer and you need to be established and well-rooted in Christ before you go out there and preach the gospel with like a chicken with your head cut off and you see no fruit and get discouraged. And we have a free discipleship course that you could take. Click the link in the description and you can become a powerful Remnant Revival Outreach Center soldier and evangelize wherever you at. It's a digital ministry. All right. Number three, you have to be able to adapt. My brothers and sisters, look, I'm wearing a Jordan shirt. I have a chain on. Do you, you see, I'm not religious. Some people go out there and they preach the gospel with a whole suit and button down like they got about to go preach a sermon in the streets. Look. Ain't nobody trying to listen to the preacher man with the suit. They're just not. They want to be able, they want to have someone that relates to them. Paul said, I will be all things to all men so that I might save some. With the Jew, I'll be a Jew. With the weak, I'll be a weak. I'll be weak. What does he mean by that? Is that he adapts. He would adapt to win souls so that I might save some. He would adapt. He understood that I don't have to preach with wise and contentious words. I don't come preaching. Romans 10, 9 says that you must believe in your heart and confess from your mouth and, and that, 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 like, no, that doesn't win a soul to Christ. They don't care about you yelling on the microphone, telling them they're going to hell. That is not going to win souls to Christ. That's going to bring people in condemnation and religion if they even believe it and come to Christ. They need to be free. They need to know that, 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 that there's a reason why they want to, they, they need to understand. So you got to adapt. I, I, I've specialized in one-on-one -on -one encounters. That's my bread and butter. God has graced me with that. So I'm able to convince people. Paul would convince people in the word, right? It says that he would convince people. He would go to the marketplaces. He went to the marketplace in Athens and he convinced all these people who were worshiping unknown gods and false gods out there in Greece. And he says he went on the mountain of Mars and he preached to them and they had they were interested. And he won all these souls to Christ. And he talked about Jesus. He told them, you even worship a God that literally says unknown God on the altar. You don't even know the gods you worship because they were always looking for a new God to worship. And he said, I worship the God who created the universe. And he started preaching the gospel to him. He preached a gospel adapting to the circumstance and situation and he didn't look religious and crazy. He probably dressed like the local Greeks. He probably went to a little store, bought a little outfit and looked just like them. If you're going to go to the mall and you're going to and you're going to preach to the people in the sneaker store, obviously wear some sneakers, wear a Jordan shirt. I specialize in preaching to people from the streets, drug dealers, young kids, millennials and Generation Z. They ain't going to care about no no person with a suit on in a Bible. Come on now, that's religious. They're going to be like, get out my face, bro. Get out my face, preacher, preacher man. But if they have the, the pastor who doesn't look like a pastor like me, I pull up on them like, what's up, bro? And let me ask you a question. I always do these interviews I, and they, they think I'm going to do a worldly interview. And I ask them, I say, bro, what's the purpose of life? Hit them like I'm adapting. They don't even know I'm a Christian yet. They ask me, what kind of interview are you doing? I just be like, it's a positive interview. Nothing crazy, nothing sexual, nothing derogatory. It's just a spiritual interview. I, 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 that's the one thing I'll, I'll give them. It's a spiritual interview right there. They're like, okay, bet. What's the purpose of life, right? You ask them that question. They're like, man, you know, I, I don't know, man. I, and that's when you let the Holy Spirit lead you. You need to be led by the Spirit for every circumstance. No circumstance looks the same, my brother and my sister. You cannot be religious and you cannot be robotic and you cannot be black and white in Christ. You can't box God up. So you you really can't box up evangelism. It's not going to work. You're, you're, it's like a war that you're having with the devil in the spirit. And you don't and, and like the person don't even know it's like they're chained up. That's how I see it when I'm preaching to these people. I'm not looking at the person. I can see in the spirit, the demon that's operating to keep them from getting saved. So I'm moving in strategy. I'm using the word of God, but I'm using it in a way they understand. I'm moving in love, right? Paul said, and, and spirit and power, I'm, I'm bearing the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, patience, and faith, right? I'm bearing the fruit of the spirit, but also I'm moving in the power. And that is number four, power. You have to move in power, which means healing, deliverance, miracles. So I, miracles, signs, and wonders, right? Like that, that, the demonstration of power, like Paul speaks about in the epistles, like you have to move in power. Can you preach the gospel from your words and the power come out? Yeah. You know how many times I've been preaching, just speaking and people start crying. 
I didn't even have no word of knowledge, no deliverance, no healing. They just start crying. And I'm like, why are you crying? And they're like, I don't even know. It's because of the power of God, because I was in the presence of God earlier that morning praying. I was in the glory and the, I'm bringing heaven with me. So when I speak, it's a spiritual understanding. I, it, ain't, it ain't even about the words. I'm preaching in a way that they're going to get hit because they're feeling something they haven't felt before and demons got to go. But also the power is, oh, if you see somebody with a cane, with a with a with a crutch, you see someone with a cast, you lay hands on you. Hey, you get you you join this discipleship course, you going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to get healed. You're going to receive an impartation through this ministry. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of people get healed from all types of things. All types of things all the time. It's by faith. God, the Bible says that if you believe these signs shall follow, you will heal the sick. You will raise the dead. You will cast out demons. You will cleanse the lepers, right? You will take up poison and it won't do harm. These are all promises. Mark 16, verse 17. Go look it up. Mark, Mark chapter 16, verse 17. So we have to be able to believe the word at face value. That when we lay hands on the sick, they will be healed. And when you catch that by revelation, you will lay hands on the sick. You don't have to be a healing evangelist to do that. Everybody's called to lay hands on the sick. Everyone's called to cast out demons. You might start laying hands on someone and you say, come out in the name of Jesus. And they start falling to the ground, getting delivered. Like, like you saw in this video that I posted um, earlier in the, at, at the beginning of this in the intro. She, I started talking to her about unforgiveness for her father and I prayed for her. I didn't even touch her. The spirit dropped. She got touched by God. She was receiving deliverance to the point where we had to get kicked out. The, the manager kicked us out because the worker, she didn't believe nothing. She didn't believe, she didn't know the Holy Ghost was going to touch her. She was being prideful, had her walls up. I just preached, I preached the gospel simply. She said she was a believer, goes to church. I talked about unforgiveness. She forgave, but then the spirit touched her and healed her and delivered her right there on the spot. I didn't even know that was going to happen. That's all the Holy Spirit. You have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You have to commune with him, right? So power, miracles, signs, and wonders. Now, the last thing is you have to win the soul. So you need to preach the gospel. If you move in power, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, right? Go look up the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Go read about it. It's in the book of Corinthians. Go read it. And, and if you're moving in, and, and it's in 1 Corinthians, by the way. And if you're moving in power and, and miracles and signs and wonders, but you don't preach the gospel, you're just operating in witchcraft. What did you do it for? You're just trying to control them. Like they don't know. They don't know. They don't know what the good news is. So now when you move in power, so right. You, you, you know the gospel, you memorized it, you've prayed and you prepared in the spirit before you went, you've adapted, right? So you, you, you came in a way that doesn't look religious, where they were listening to you, they want to actually have a conversation with you, where you're showing love, you moved in power, they might have got healed, you might have had a word of knowledge that really touched them, now they're open, now they're ready, now they're susceptible, they're they're receptive to listen to what you got to say because now you've built a relationship. Now the Holy Spirit's gr grabbing them. Now they're anything you say, their heart is open. Their heart is open. That's what witches do, but they do it the demonic way. When you go to a psychic, they start telling you a whole bunch of truths about your past because demons, demons are in the spirit realm. They know what happened in the past, but the devil never knows what's going to happen in the future. So that anything they tell you about the future is usually a lie. So they'll tell you a whole bunch of truths like, oh, when you were six, this happened because there's demons operating everywhere. All the demons got to do is tell the other demon, hey, tell, tell him that he went to Chick-fil-A today at two o'clock and got a number two. Tell him. And then the demon says, OK, and goes and tells the witch. The witch has a prophetic gift on her. But with the problem is it's perverted and she's hearing from demons in the spirit realm instead of God, because most prophetic people, they have an ear to hear in the spirit but they need to read the word of God and pray to, to really know God's voice so they don't listen to the voice of the devil. So these witches and warlocks are thinking they're hearing from their dead grandma and dead grandpa and uncle, but really it's a shape-shifting demon, right? Who's speaking to them, oh, tell him that he got a number two at Chick-fil-A earlier today. And the witch goes, you got a number two at Chick-fil-A earlier today. Now the person's like, bro, how does she know that? Now, guess what happens? Their heart is open and anything that witch says they're going to listen to. But now the witch is listening to the demon and, and telling them your, 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 your uncle's doing witchcraft on you. You need to go and you need to make, you need to go buy these rituals because the, the witch is listening to the demon. The witch really believes it because the witch, are, the witch is, is also deceived. So the witch is telling the person, your, your, your uncle's doing witchcraft on you. You need to spend a thousand dollars right now and you need to go buy this plant and this thing and you need to do this ritual and crystal and sage. So now they're freaking out and they're like, my uncle, how could he do this? And now they're against their uncle. 
they're doing witchcraft to protect them which is really witchcraft on their uncle so now this witch turned this other person into a whole witch and now the devil's job is to convince them to the point where they want to become a witch and be used to evangelize for the devil but we do it the opposite way for god so when you preach the gospel you operated in miracles signs and wonders because remember the devil always perverts what god does and you're moving in power and you adapted and you and everything now they're open and you preach the gospel the good news of jesus christ the reason i told you all that is so that you guys can be aware because some of you are even receiving freedom right now from this revelation because you've been to psychics and witches and now it's hitting you so you preach the good news like i said earlier the under five minute gospel they receive it you lead them to christ now you need to get them plugged into a church so what you could do here at the rock the remnant revival outreach center you could bring them to the central florida area if you're in the area if not get them plugged into the discipleship program digitally and they can still be plugged in online now they become a, a member of a church they need to get baptized they need to get hands laid on them probably more deliverance more healing they need to receive the baptism of the holy ghost all that can happen where you're at but sometimes they got to go so you got to make sure that you, you you give them an outlet so what i do usually is say hey Follow me on social media, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, whatever it is. And, and I say, hey, and I say, hey, what's your number? And I'll get their number, shoot them a text, and that's it. And then I'm led by the spirit. If, if I contact them or not, I usually don't contact them. I just pray for them. Sometimes I'll put them on my prayer list and pray for them for a few weeks and just act, I pray that the Lord would bring them in. But ultimately, some, it's, 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 it's either you plant a seed, you water a seed, or you win a soul. That's it. But they're not always coming to Christ. But at the same time, like if you're moving in power and the spirit like that and you preach the full gospel and you've done it the right way to they receive, you planted a major seed, my brother, and my sister. Do not be discouraged. I've planted and watered more seeds than one souls. Mark my words. It's probably one out of every, I say probably one out of every 100 people that I witnessed to actually come to Christ. So don't be discouraged. But that's how you win souls, my brothers and sisters. That's a five step easy process. Again, if you want to learn more, you could take the discipleship course at the Remnant Revival Outreach Center. It's digital. It's free. It doesn't cost a dollar. It's free 99. Click the link in the description. Join the team. Be disciple. Learn and grow. Become a mighty prophetic end times evangelist, a mighty warrior for God. We'll train you up. We love you. God bless you. Make sure to comment on this video. Like this video. Hit the bell icon for notifications. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and go share this with your mother, father, brother, sister, cousin, auntie, everybody. Make sure everyone's tapped in and learns how, learns that the five-step process to evangelism. God bless you. My name is Pastor Rich with the Remnant Revival Outreach Center. And I pray the Lord multiplies his mercy, peace, and grace on you. In Jesus' name, amen.